All right, guys, we're back with the third game of the Northern Conference Final. Rutgers versus University of Delaware. Rutgers is currently up 2-0 in the series. Game point for them. If they win this game, they win the series and are your championships for this conference. Yep, you've got Delaware looking to try to make the reverse sweep happen. You've got Aurelia Kaisa, Zach, and Kane being getting out. So it looks like Delaware is starting to target that jungle a little bit, seeing that that was really effective in these first two games for the side of Rutgers. I would either expect uh, the Ezreal to be banned away or a mid laner out of the side of Delaware for their final ban, because this Ezreal has really survived well against the Caitlyn. Yeah, it's unless they're willing to pick it, they should right now just kind of get rid of it. This Ezreal's just been outplaying them. I'm guessing the Tristana ban might be the third and final ban. That would be the Swain coming out, so Rutgers can't get it on the blue side with their first pick. Yep, so, so Rutgers prioritizes as their first pick here. And again, they might go for that AD carry or the Jax. Jax was not banned away this time. It was banned in the first two games, and now you can see why as they first pick it in game three here. Though we don't know top Jax or jungle Jax. I would take a gander to say jungle Jax is going to pull pretty tightly, but we will see. We'll see a mouth fight coming in for UD. My smog a yellow basketball cup. Got the orn. Go for the orn. So get those good orn alt engages on side of Delaware. This game. Yes, we'll see here what they do as their second pick. They will go for their jungler here, or will they pick up the Caitlyn again? No, so they'll they prioritize them, the Alistair, the support over their ADC. And it is a top Jax with a jungle Kha'Zix coming in for Rutgers. And Rutgers going to take away the Caitlyn time. So we'll see if Delaware takes the Ezreal to survive the Caitlyn. They mix it up a bit. See if they've learned anything these past couple games, but so far a lot of adaptation. Three new picks coming in from the side of Rutgers, and it looks like they might be going. They do indeed go with the Ezreal. You are correct. So we're in the second phase. No mid laners have been picked, and a support on the side of Rutgers has not been picked. Really, really mixing it up in the bot lane this series. A lot of different picks coming out. We've got the Caitlyn and the Ezreal, We've got the Ezreal and the Caitlyn, and the Caitlyn and the Ezreal. Yep, they're just trading back and forth. There are other AD carries in the game, guys, but it seems like that's all they want to play with right now. The Ezreal makes like sense going against the Cosmics and the Jax. It'll allow you to have that Arcane Shift to get away, so it looks like mid laners are being targeted bands right now. And that Thresh support, they don't want to deal with the Caitlyn Thresh combination. Yeah, the, the hooks on the Thresh were really good last game. Despite the fact he got caught out with Flash a few times by the Talia wall, he was making plays on his champion. And it looks like we got a Nidalee jungle coming out from the side of Delaware to match the Kha'Zix. Not sure if it's a pocket pick for Into the Dusk, but we are going to find out here who is the better jungler. Best kind of NA with that Ice Blade damage or the broke and burst from the Nidalee. I have not seen Nidalee jungle in quite some time, so this will be a refreshing change of pace here. And the Kha'Zix block comes out. Is actually into the into the Dusk's most played jungler this season. And he doesn't have any game. Nidalee is not one of his top played champions, so it must be a very deep pocket pick for him to pull out. Yeah, be willing to risk this down. Zero two, you got to move all the stops, all the tricks. If you want to win there. And speaking of tricks, they're going for likely the Zoe, who is full of tricks. Oh lord! But no, oh, they're the Zoe. 
I'm not sure which one's worse because you got Zillion who can then just pop bombs and load up speed ups on the Kha'Zix to the Jacks and give everyone a second life here. If you go with that Anivia, that's actually a really good pick in Brazilian. Try to help counter some of that. So this is your lineup for potentially the final game. That's what Rutgers wants. Rutgers wants to go up 3-0 and finish the sweep against the side of University of Delaware. Delaware pulling out the bird for their final, potentially final game. They're saying, let's use our mascot here. Let's go ahead. Let's put our mascot in the mid lane. Hopefully Is it the mid lane, lane now? Because currently, Nidalee and, and Into the Dusk is the one holding onto Anivia right now. So we might be getting... I don't know what we're getting. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. And I don't think there's a reason for them to have double smite. But we will never know or back no here soon so see what happens here it, i would I guess we might have a remake but i'm not sure i would hope it mean doesn't mean that delaware has kind of given up ah the anivia swapped over to teleport at the last minute but it is into the dusk swapping positions with herson herson is moving over to the jungle and into the dusk is now in mid lane on the anivia so now we we have more insight into why the Nidalee was picked up since Into the Dusk was n not really one to play her. Yep, so it'll be interesting to see now this lineup change of sending Herson to the jungle and Into the Dusk into the mid lane. Into the Dusk hopes that his team is not being sent into the Dusk, though, so they want to pull out that win and try to rise up here. See yeah. What they can do. But we got about two minutes here jumping into this game. We got Orn versus Jax. Kha'Zix versus Nidalee, Zillion versus Anivia, and Caitlin Brown versus Ezreal Alistar. I think the Jax is definitely going to out split push this Orn. Post six, I would definitely put the matchup in Jax's favor. Oh, absolutely. Especially with Conqueror, which is likely what he's taking, either Conqueror or press the attack. We'll yeah, there's plenty are... of justice there. However, with the advantage that that UD does have is that they can get a lot of stun locks up with the Anivia wall or in Anivia's um, Q, so they can do a lot of, of CC to potentially get some key picks off on, on Rutgers, but Rutgers does have the bonus light from Zillion and the Unbreakable from the Braum, as well as just a lot of damage. Yeah, I think. Of everyone on their team. When you see the Anivia and Orn, you kind of think team fights. But with the Nidalee, Nidalee's not very good in fights in the late game. She kind of has to look for a pick off on the side or a flank to catch someone. And isn't she can't really jump in and expect to really get out with much amount of success. Meanwhile, I think uh, Rutgers is definitely going to try and split push with that Jax. Yeah, it should be interesting to kind of see what happens here. I mean, Delaware's backs are against the wall. So they've got to do whatever they can right now, right here, and make it happen. And in about 25 seconds, we will see what these two teams can do. Up 2-0 for Rutgers going against University of Delaware. Match point for Rutgers, and Delaware's trying to initiate the reverse sweep. So we'll see what happens here in about 10 seconds, team. Give your team and your squad some love with that hashtag UD win or hashtag RU win. Make sure you invite people to watch the stream, subscribe to us, and we will see you here in just a few moments. My vote is still hashtag casters win. <laughs> Always. It was a casters game where we played against, I believe it was University of Delaware. Yeah, and that was a. That was a fun time. They ran an all predator all kind of ran over the casters, but hey, we were not expecting to have to play a team. We weren't able to do the research and you know, stuff. I mean, happen. you you had you had Ryan Papa Sins on your team. I wasn't expect expecting much to come from him. <laughs> if oh, you're listening, man. Ryan, then I know you Man, BMing the man upstairs, BMing the man in 
because yes, Ryan Papasim is actually one of the head people of the ACEL, and he is a very awesome person in that regard. Pulling out the Garen top, though, was not his best pick there, <laughs> but we do have a bug splat coming right in. A pause due to a bug splat in the top lane, so looks like Eternal Crystal has been bug splatted. It's because he's carrying around that staff, you know. Mosquitoes are just going to be drawn to the light, so he needs to... Nah, he... You would have expected the bug splat out of the Kha'Zix, out of anyone. Well, I mean, maybe if that was, that'd just be too telling of, hey, your bug's gonna get splat. But I mean, come on, the Jax walks around with like a lamp. So just constantly being illuminated. You got mosquitoes coming around there, just wanting to be all in there. So we'll see what happens. It says that he has reconnected, so we'll see if he does reconnect here. You also have the minion dematerializer on the side of uh, Rutgers with the Zillion, so that should be interesting there. And Dematerializer also on the side of Anivia, so both mid laners rock with Dematerializer. It'll be interesting to see if Rutgers can make the Caitlyn pick work better to their advantage than Delaware did, and how well with the Ezreal and Caitlyn swaps, what exactly happens in the bot lane. Yep, and so we will see what happens here. Also, note how Nidalee is going press the attack. I did not expect press the attack out of Nidalee, but going for that duelist potential there. So... Death? But how often is Nidalee, Nidalee going... Or not Nidalee, Nidalee going to be auto-attacking heavily against the Kha'Zix? I am not sure, but it looks like they're going to find out here. We, were, we will find out here as well to see what they can actually do. I'm interested to see that. I was expecting more of the phase rush or even the electrocute coming out of her, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, and uh, Orn actually only starting with the refillable pots right now. So he doesn't actually have a starting item, which makes me think he's going to buy either a ruby crystal or something along those lines with his passive when he gets a little bit of gold. Yep, that is the advantage that you do have as Orn is that you can kind of wait around and you technically don't ever have to leave. You have enough potions, so we'll see what they can do with that. And jumping in here, you do have both bottom sides starting, so red and blue side respectively being started for these jungles. I'm really curious to see what they do here with this Anivia with Rusty Attack and the whole squad in general. But really just... They do ward up the blue buff on the side of Rutgers, so making sure that they don't have Nidalee jumping in to take that at all. Yeah, we got just a little skirmishing going up in the bot lane. And Jax did kick, take Conquer over press the attack, so he'll be doing a decent bit of true damage to the Orn. Yeah, but it looks like the Orn, even with a lot of that without having a single item right now, his base stats just make it pretty beefy. Just able to take a good amount of that damage there. You do have to top side right now, and damage coming on both from the bottom lane of Rutgers, just really outplaying even early against the squad of EV. Yeah, Jack's basically going for trades with every time his uh, Conqueror is up to just get those extra bits of true damage harass onto the Orn, and then Orn backing off a little bit does pick up the Doran's shield. So he went for the refillable pots just to be have a bit more sustain and then wanted the Doran shield as well. Jax jumping in on him, getting the stun conquer proc. So he Jax is winning out on these early trades, even though I thought it would be Orn at the start, but he's being very aggressive on this one. Yep, he is rocking that Corrupting Potion. Uh, that also does limit his ability to sustain good amounts of, of damage early, so once he runs out of that potion, you might see some ganks from the side of UD. However, he did ward up that tri so we should see most ganks coming here from the side of Purcell. Yeah, and it looks like Kha'Zix went directly from his blue buff into the Nidalee's jungle to try and take some of her camps away from her, but Nidalee is topside onto the Jax. The Jax does not have his jump up right now, 
forced to flash away. His jump is up and he will use a minion to escape. Will the Nidalee continue to go onto him? Does land the spear. Flash and the jump forward for the first blood execute onto the Nidalee. So despite having pressed the attack over Electrocute, she still does get the first blood on Jax. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's a matter of, for UD, it's you gotta risk it, risk it, man. I mean, you gotta do whatever it takes to try to win, and you can sacrifice in your flash, you trade flash for flash, and then you also got the teleport from the Jax in order to get all that damage there out, and I don't even think you'll have to burn. Surprised the right tank in the mid lane. The jump coming in from Anivia, luckily she does have the egg passive up. But it is popped, so Ka can return gank with no more flash for Anivia. If you don't got have flash for an instant top. trade going in on the top lane, Jack's really putting the hurt on Orn with uh, the D blade. And Orn forced to flash away, but Jax doesn't continue the chase because he's standing in the minion wave. But Jax could go for the kill at his leisure now. Nidalee bot side looking to try something, but this Caitlyn is definitely uh, sustaining a better farm lead over the Ezri. This time being on Rutgers instead of East Coast Harry on the Caitlyn. Yep, you've got fairly even farm across the board, so nothing too damning to write home about right now, but a lot of pressure being put on by this Jax, taking advantage of the fact that he just has more damage. And even though he's down 0 1, he can still just do what Jax does best, which is really dish out that extra damage. He does have that control ward down in the top river bush. So these next these next ganks though for the junglers are gonna be kind of telling him their focus, whether it's continue to put it all in the Orn basket, which Orn, if you get him ahead, can just be incredibly frustrating to deal with, or if you try to get something going in the mid or bottom lane, I'd say if you're UD, you go with that top lane, because I think that's kind Cosmix is top side, he doesn't know Nidalee's behind her, Nidalee think war, but they stun up the Orn, Orn forced to dash away, but the Kha'Zix flashing forward, Jax does get the kill, and Nidalee didn't see the... Kha'Zix and not able to help in time. Yeah, Kha'Zix does burn his flash to get that kill, but it's a, not really too much of a sacrifice if you do secure that kill, especially without there being teleported from the side of University of Delaware. We do have the bottom lane pushing in though on, on University of Delaware on Rutgers, and now they are pressing up Zillion, making a gank down bottom lane to see if he can secure a kill from the bomb. Ezreal forced the flash away from the bomb. And Stunned up by the Grom passive, gets the Ignite put on him and the Caitlyn trap. Steps on a Caitlyn trap, but doesn't fall. Yep, does manage to walk away and good on East Coast Carry for holding that heal, not panic hitting with that heal. And the All Star does have a good amount of mana left, so he should be able to fill up pretty quickly. Does still eat that Caitlyn trap though, feeling like he wants some cupcakes, but unfortunately, those are not the cupcakes you want, my friend. And so both their, their buffs are back up again, so we're going to see who makes the next gank here. We do have Braum without the Ignite. Alistar does still have the Flash and Exhaust, so he potentially may take the play here. Ezreal going on to the Orn again, just constantly keeping trades. And Orn ult coming out as well. Jax ult popped his ult as well, and Jax is actually losing his trade. Forceful Ward hop away. He was just sitting in minions. Kha'Zix on the Anivia in the... I definitely think he should keep abusing the Anivia right now without her egg and the flash in the mid lane. Yep, definitely taking advantage there. And I mean, right now it's still 1 1. You got a jungle by the BD and a kill on the top laner from the side of Rutgers. And honestly, some great damage still coming out from the Orin. Just still trying to do what he can to carry his team. and. This team can get pretty strong and pretty intense with the power of that Orin, so look for him later in the game. But another gate coming in from the top side, but it looks like he might be able to get away. You do have Nidalee waiting in the wings, and no more damage coming out of that Kha'Zix. Yeah, and then or Nidalee trying to get the counter gank, but Jax jumps and dodges the spear. 
you ready to clear out that ward though. Brahm's sitting around mid lane though. So we'll see if bottom lane can take advantage of the fact that they do not have their support there. It looks like first is going to continue to clear out this this established vision on the side of Rudgers in their jungle. But on her, does clear out two pink wards there, so that takes away some of that good clean vision that they do have. So, so far, I'd actually, I like what UD has done with their vision. They're actually finally starting to put some more aggressive wards down and play a game more based around their vision. So, they've got some good vision score from the Nidalee, already a 10 on that vision score, so good on her. So, we'll see if they can keep that up to maybe get that to a victory. Yeah, and Kha'Zix has already missed his window of opportunity to gank the plane. Stun, or, uh, flash and passes back up. Kha'Zix and Nidalee dueling in the jungle, and it looks like Nidalee solo the Kha'Zix. I guess she doesn't need Electrocute. Press the attack works just fine. Yeah, and I actually, now that I think about it more, with Nidalee, that actually might not be too bad of a keystone, just because you can get a lot of the auto attack sets from changing up in your cougar form because those do proc as auto attacks i believe so yeah, i think that's just a good like you essentially get a quick three burst and then you just start doing a lot more damage it looks like they will be rewarded they are taking advantage of the lack of jungler and goes in to secure that first dragon they do secure that ocean break great job from the side of ud making the comeback all tied up here though in gold just playing around there duel going on in the top lane though of orin versus that's alt yeah yeah, and it looks like Nidalee's actually rushing a Trinity Force right instead of a jungle item. So she might be going AD Nidalee instead of AP because she has the Sheen and the Longsword. And Kha'Zix going for another trade to the Nidalee. Zillion there this time to support both at half health, but it looks like Nid's going to force Zillion to use the ult and kills the Kha'Zix, but gets revived and Nidalee forced out of the fight really low, and Kha'Zix is going to keep going for that kill, but spotted stepping on the Nidalee trap, but not going to be able to catch her. He'll just take the wolves as a reward. But we got the bot lane coming down onto Kha'Zix. Nidalee flashes away, Kha'Zix flashes forward to pick up the kill, Alistair and Ezreal are there, and Ezreal will pick up the double buffs from the Kha'Zix. So see if Ezreal can take advantage of that. You do have the Zilling who flashed forward to get the double bomb, but the Jukes from the bird. The I don't think you should have. birds are fighting hard, and so we'll see if they can continue to push that advantage. You do have double buff on the Ezreal, which means he does not need to leave the lane to spam those abilities and stack up that tier even more. Yeah, I don't think the Zillion should have flashed forward, especially with Anivia still having her egg up. Once Zillion uses his bombs, he really does not have much damage. So, kind of just a massive misplay on his part. Yeah, and also not having the the Chrono Shift available either. Keep him alive. And we do have the Alistar ultimate being proc. They are looking for a fight here. As Jill's poking the Brahma really low. Well. Down. Flashes forward. Heal from the Caitlyn. Flash from Brahm. We got both teleports. We got from Anivia and Orn coming down. The Kha'Zix getting caught up by the Anivia stun and will fall. The Orn not coming out. Catching the Braum, Ezreal will catch, kills the Braum, and Caitlyn forced to flash away, and they good two for one in favor of Delaware. But yeah, Jax are going to have to try to push for that first tower if they want to get that right now, because otherwise Jax will get that first one in the top lane. Yeah, I think they're going to be able to clear out the wave fast enough with the Zillion and Caitlyn, even though there are four people from Delaware bot side. Jax has no one there to try and defend the turret, so he just has free time to push. Yeah, we also no longer have the wave from Jax. We'll see who managed to get that first. It's going to be pretty close. Going on the Zillion, forced to use his ult. And I think that Delaware can get it. I don't know. They're focusing the champions. Jax oh, they gets so it by close. two auto attack. Kha'Zix coming in and picking off the Orn, overstaying Zillion, going very low from the Nidalee. Doesn't have his ult. Ezreal dodges Brahms. Uh, Glacial Fisher. So, they get the turret. They don't get the first turret, though, and they lose Orn on the side of Delaware, so just unlucky. I think they should have focused the turret a little bit harder instead of the champions. Kha'Zix caught in the jungle by Anivia Wall. Alistair picking up the kill, and Braum looks like he's going to fall as well. Really greedy on the side of Rutgers. 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's really all you can judge it out to is what your thought that that UD was just going to back and reset after that, and they could take that easy, quick blue, but you see that then they get caught out, and now this Nimby is rewarded by being able to go and take the red buff and establish some control in the lane over this Kazis, and they're also getting a lot of pressure over on this mid lane tower, down to about a quarter HP. The yeah. Jax right now fighting that Rift Herald does grab the Rift Herald. And there's, there's this thing about Anivia where an even Anivia is a fed Anivia. If you let her scale up, even if you're even in lane, she will more than likely outscale whoever she's laning against. With this, her, she has insane scaling with her ults and E and team fight presence, especially with the Zillion. Yep, and you do see that the Anivia has both the tier of the Goddess and the, and the Rod of Ages stacking right now. So advantage in terms of mana and potentially AP coming from the Anivia right now versus just the, the staff coming out of Resilient. Yeah, and Anivia is 2-0, and oh, meanwhile the 0-1-1. Oh, one and one. Yeah, and right now, I mean, Delaware is playing their hearts out there, playing their very best they can. They're up four kills on on this Rudger squad, so this Anivia, I mean, this Nidalee right now, 3-1-3, three, three, playing really well, but Anivia is gonna get ganked. Forced to flash away, doesn't have the wall. The ult coming on to Kha'Zix, Nidalee showing up to support, and Kha'Zix and Zillion forced to run away. Anivia ult saving, or er, passive egg saving her yet again. And there is no ult from the Kha'Zix available now. They do use Shelly to get that tower down in bottom lane. This Jax just becoming the split put push thrust that threat they need it to be right now. So we'll see if they continue to press that. However, they do have both Person and Rito God, please, jumping down to that bottom lane to try to kill off Shelly. Yeah, I think that Wreckers has definitely executed the Caitlyn bot lane much better this game than Delaware did the first two. But right now, mid and jungle are just getting out classed by Delaware, although it looks like Anivia is going to fall to the... She overstayed and tried to kill the Kha'Zix and got caught out. Oh, we'll see if the True Shot Barrage manages... Oh, just missing. Half a second too late from the Ezreal. The uh, minion... I'm going to blame the minions there. The min auto attack him fast enough to stop the back. Yep. Unfortunately, it's the minion's fault there, but we do have a gank looking like it might be coming in from a person We're going in on the jacks. Uh, we do have jumping in there from there. Person is jumping in though, did miss the spear. Jax popping his ultimate, still has his stun, not going to get it onto Nidalee. The Conqueror is popped, and Nidalee just disappears under Kha'Zix. The Orin ult is popped, but I don't think he can 2v1 Kha'Zix and Jax. And yeah. that is just bad for Delaware right now. Yeah, unfortunately, once you miss that Nidalee Spear, you miss out on a lot of first damage. And Teleport was burned from Virtue, so even if they did manage to secure that, they would have yeah. certainly... Nidalee, or not Nidalee, Anivia going to fall to the Throm. And Zillion going to get his ult pop, so he responds with... Slightly more health. Kha'Zix accidentally jumping under turret with no minions and forced to flash back out to avoid dying to Ezreal. Bit of a misplay there by him, but good pick onto the Anivia. Yep, it looks like that second Ocean Drake will go over the side of Rutgers as there's pressure on him. See this tower how they do the Ocean Drake. going in. The Ezreal ult blocked, blocked by Braum. Shot Barrage. Allie forced to burn his ult, barely getting away with his life. Nidalee and Ezreal still going. Orn teleporting in, does not have ultimate. The Caitlyn forced to heal to try and run away. Braum slowed just enough. Ezreal flashing forward, but the Braum blocks the Q to keep his Caitlyn alive. And no one going down on either side despite the elongated trade. But Delaware gets the push in the mid lane and they're going for this tier 2 mid. Yep, I mean, they do have the advantage here where. Caitlyn and Braum both were low, needing to back along with the Kha'Zix, so they should be able to maybe even get this tower. No, the Protoship is procced, does not have to be fully used, however it does allow Jax to jump in. They do secure that first inner tower though, so good on them for pressuring where they could. I think that was a bit of a... 
premature all out of a zillion there too going on to the jacks as soon as he jumped in thinking he would be popped instantly but delaware good on not uh trying to blow everything on him and let him respawn with the zillion alt yep that is the one thing with that is you don't want him to actually die just because otherwise he responds with a pretty much full hp bar again and he just turns a lot of abilities on so he does have the completed Triforce and the Tiamat, so he's looking for that. However, he also have the Triforce completed out of person in his melee. And seven minute stack on uh, the Rod of Ages from Anivia. And a completed Frozen Heart from Orin. So it looks like he'll be looking for a little bit of a fight here. Seeing what he can do. The all Getting his sun up. All coming out, but I think Orin's just dead. He can't he can't fight the Jax. He's not tanky enough. Jax has too much damage with Conquer and Trinity Force. Because unfortunately that was just too much damage and I actually believe that that Jax actually used his leap strike to dodge the CC from the call of the Forge God. Because I did not see him getting knocked up there. Kazi's coming in though for East Coast carry to see if he can manage to get that kill off for that damage. He's definitely going to get the 1v1 with the Isolate as well as Dust Blade and Ezreal just dies. And I believe that was the Jax? Get the uh, blue buff. Yes, Jax got the blue buff there, away from Delaware. Okay, it looks like Rutgers is just starting to push its advantages. It's got farm advantages, it's got damage advantages, it's got item advantages, and they're just really starting to put the stranglehold on University of Delaware. So Delaware's got to try to make something happen with this Anivia and this Nidalee pick that they have. Kha'Zix going in, almost completely deleting the Nidalee. Caitlyn ult, not enough to finish, gets blocked by Alistair. Alistair stunned up with his ult. Anivia trying to zone people away with her ultimate. And the Jax flashing in, getting the double stun onto the Anivia. Still tanking up the entire turret. Still going in, the Zillion ult comes down onto the Jax. He will die. Kha'Zix, no. He Jax picks up the kill onto Ezreal. The Orn manages to kill Caitlyn, and Ezreal gets the kill onto Rom. Er, Kha'Zix going and jumping onto the Alistair for the kill. Orn trying to pick up another onto the Zillion, but Zillion will just run quickly away. And the flash forward by Orn, not enough to finish him off. Jax will kill it, and that is an ace on the side of Rectors, and they can free push in the mid lane with three alive. Yep, I mean, Delaware just starting to, starting to crumble here. I mean... They had as many advantages as they could early, and just they just misplayed them away. They had their leads, and they just misplayed and allowed uh, Wreckers to get picks, and their lead is completely gone. Yep, in fact, it's now turned into a 4k gold deficit. So we'll see who manages to secure this first one here. East Coast carry about to be caught out. It's Flat deleted. Oh, oh the Kha'Zix dump knocked by the Alistair and saves his ADC and the missing things coming in from Kha'Zix teammates. Man, feels bad there, but great job from Night Stealth just keeping East Coast carry alive. It looks like they're going to try to pressure him to cure some vision and deny some vision from the side of Rutgers. This Jax is 7 and 1. He has a completed Trinity Force and now has a Ginsu. No one can du duel this fed Jax. And it looks like Braum is currently stuck in the Anivia wall. Yep, we're stuck between two very, very cold places. But luckily he is from the Freljord, so he should be just fine with that. And the blue buff resetting. Feels bad. That was just. A lot more than they want. Making they Brom. have a third dragon coming up here, and Jax is around in the jungle. This third dragon is the first Cloud Drake of the game. So we'll see who goes for that first and where they can get their vision their vision at. Still very good vision scores on the side of University of Delaware. Overall much better than the side of, of Rutgers, but Rutgers is just overall just trying to push it and play it a little bit cleaner than UD. Yeah, this, this Orin is just stuck in whatever sideline Jax decides to go to. He's just basically under turret wave clearing because he can't actually go out and match the Jax in a 1v1. We also have the Dust Blade of the Darken 
completed by Kazik, so he can absolutely just delete anybody that he sees that doesn't that the name is not Orin or Alistar. He might even be able to delete them though right now with how fed he is. The Orin does have the frozen heart, but he doesn't have much mat HP to him. He only has the abyssal mass. And you see the Kazis running around in the jungle for a kick. Looking to try to find thinking they're on the Baron. True shot fraud has been blown. Oh, and they catch catch him out. Ezreal not gonna walk into the same book twice without vision. DC has learned from that mistake there, but they did secure that second dragon There's the first ocean first cloud drake, in my correction. With Ozic still going for the Ezreal, and oh just barely not enough. Flashes forward. And he's gonna die to the turret! Can't quite get it with the slow from the... Uh... Iceborne Gauntlet from Ezreal. Yeah, Unlucky. and unfortunately those purple spikes were still on cooldown, and so he was not able to get that W off. Or managed to get Alistair that W off. Alistair another fight knocked out. Immediately the quarter shift being clocked. Teleport coming in from Jax from behind. All the fours got being clocked. Zillion has been taken down. Jax going from behind. Do they turn on this Jax? He will get the... does not get the stun onto the Anivia, does get it on Alistair and Orin, but he's not tanky enough right now, even with his ult up, to survive a 4v1. And, and, and surprised there that person just continued to go on to the Caitlyn instead of turning to help get the guaranteed kill, it would seem like, on the Jax. I think that's a very big mistake from the side of person. Yeah, and the Zillion just instantly popping ult, thinking he'll be burst, but they see it come out and leave him be. As the Kha'Zix going in, trying to get the Ezreal, popping his ult, just can't quite get it. Ezreal hidden by the body of Alistair and dies to the Anivia. There's the one thing that, that UD does have going for them, is they have an immense amount of wave clear with this Anivia and the Ezreal to just kind of keep the team from pushing in on them. So they might just be able to use that to continue to repel themselves forward and keep themselves in this game. Trying to clear up this vision here, but that is very risky for East Coast Fairy to be there with that team coming in with a lot of assassins. Yeah, they just need to continue to split push with the Jax bot lane, with the Baron up, get push the Orn under turret, have Jax roam up and try and get the teleport out of the Orn for Baron, and then just immediately reset and start it over again, and abuse the fact that Orn doesn't have the teleport. Yeah, we'll see what happens here with that. I mean, right now, the way that I'd say UD has to play this is just continue to put the pressure and the poke with the Nidalee and Nibia and Ezreal, and just play towards that, and as long as that's what your focus is, then you can at least last a while until Orin gets another couple items, becomes pretty tanky and relevant. We do have this Kha'Zix just continuing to roam around in the jungle with the new Kha'Zix passive, where after level 6, if he is in a bush, he will turn stealth. So he's jumping on in, immediately jumps right on out, doesn't want anything to do with that Alistar. I think he's greeting a bit too hard trying to catch this Ezreal. And he's died a lot for it. Absolutely, we're gonna see here if he, he has the most deaths on his team of seven. He has the most deaths in the game. Fight breaking out the Wake of the Crocs. Lots of damage coming in from the squad. See who can come out here. All four guys yeah, are big top. Kill the Kazis. And Jax just going absolutely insane with the triple kill. And that's just a clean ace on the side of Rutgers with only the Kha'Zix falling, and they can either continue to push top lane, or that's a free Baron, whichever they decide to do. This yeah, Jax this is just absolutely massive. Oh yeah, with that massive wave, they completed Titanic Hydra now, three items fully completed, a massive wave, this should be a free tower. I, I, I completely really understand why they banned Jax away in the first two games, if this is what normally happens on Eternal Crystal. Yeah, definitely playing out of his mind right now. I mean, I give a lot of credit to UD with kind of what they've been able to put up so far, especially their game, but if you can't translate that into a quick win or mid to late game power, then it's not going to be as useful. And they're sitting in that death push. 
they're baiting out that they're going for the Baron. Let's see if they can go up here. Person this jumps right in, square into his death. However, you do have the knock up there coming in. The Nipia wall has been crocked. Let's we'll see if they can manage to Jax. close out Jax, but he's a one man army. Completely bursting through Alistair's all with his true damage and killing the Ezreal as well. Kavik's picking up the orange. It is only a Nivea left standing in a 1v5, and I think they can just end through top lane right now. Yeah, I don't think there's really much that Into the Dusk can do. Looks like he's team will be sent into the dusk unless he can make some incredible play right here, which I don't think will even survive right now. Does manage to get the Jax. double kill, however, he is going down from Jax. 14 of the Alistair coming up in four seconds. They're gonna end this game here. 14 and 14, 1 and 5 on the Jacks. Absolutely insane. And that's the series. Rutgers managing the easy 3-0 onto University of Delaware. Yep, I mean not really much else can said. You have a 14, 1 and 5 Jacks that absolutely carried out of his mind. And that's just we see now why they banned it. And they just didn't have a good a good enough counterport in their top lane. You can see that Orn actually had the second lowest gold in on his team, third lowest in the game, and just wasn't able to really make anything of that of that team fight. Yeah, it was just a really good series played by Rutgers and their their laners just outclassed those of Delaware. Absolutely. So your Northeastern Conference champions are Rudgers with Eternal Crystal, Best Ken and NA, Virtue, Andes, and Apples. So that is it for us here at the Caster's Desk. Thank you all for joining us. The third place match is also going on at the same time. It is not being streamed, so stay tuned for details on the winners of that. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to our channel or follow our channel. Follow us on Twitter as well at AC. El underscore main. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My Remember. name is Basket O Knives, and I am joined by Alex John Porsche. And remember, we do have the 9 p.m. Eastern finals going on here as well. So tune into that later tonight.